UW360 is proudly supported by BECU, a not-for-profit, member-owned credit union. Pacific Office Automation, copy, print, workflow, and IT. Problem solved. Tucker the Labrador has a mission. So you can see he's, he's got a scent. He sniffs out scat on land and sea. It helps his partner Sam do research. I was very interested in monitoring how the environment impacts wildlife. Many years ago, actually in the mid-1980s, I developed ways to measure stress and reproductive hormones from feces of wild baboons. And I quickly learned that there are a huge number of physiological and genetic products that are excreted in feces for wildlife and that the feces is the most accessible animal product in nature. For his help in finding that accessible product, Tucker gets a reward, playtime with his ball. Sam Wasser, director of the UW's Center for Conservation Biology, gets a wealth of material for his research. There are so many biological products in there. We get DNA from, from the host animal from the lining of its intestines, and that allows us to determine the species, the sex, the individual identity of the animal. From that, we can calculate the abundance of the animal. We can see how it's distributed over the landscape. We can look at sex differences in different traits. We also get stress hormones, reproductive hormones, nutrition hormones from the samples. We can get immunoglobulins from the samples, which means that we can look at the, the stress levels the animals are experiencing, their nutritional levels, their immune function. This insight into the effect a changing environment has on the lives of animals is invaluable to conservationists. When habitat changes, there are always multiple factors. The data researchers collect from SCAT allows them to isolate the impact of those individual pressures. By having this suite of physiological measures that we can get over time when various features in the environment are changing, we can use that to partition the various pressures facing these animals. That tells us what we need to fix first. So that's a really, really powerful tool that is desperately needed in the conservation and management of wildlife. Okay, let's go find it. It's a much more effective method than capturing and tagging animals, allowing for both more detailed data and a wider population sample. Tucker and the other dogs on the Conservation Canines team, along with their human handlers, have worked on projects around the world. They've sniffed out scat for northern spotted owls, Pacific pocket mice, giant anteaters in Brazil, tigers in Cambodia, and caribou in Alberta. Basically, anywhere animal populations may be affected by environmental change. The dogs love it. They're hot spots. I've been doing wildlife research since 1973, so 40 years. And this is by far the most rewarding work I've ever done because the, the, you know, you're out there and you're working as a coordinated team with these dogs and you just can't help but fall in love with these crazy animals because they're so good at what they want to do and everything is all positive about play. In Northwest Waters, Tucker and his team are tracking orca whale scat. They gather samples at various times of the year, testing them to see when toxin levels are highest, whether it's during peak fish runs or when salmon are in short supply and orcas are burning fat, dumping the toxins into their circulatory systems. And that's very, very important for understanding how to mitigate the problem because it says that it may take a long time to clean up these toxins, but the most important thing to do in the interim is to keep the fish runs high and healthy so that they are less exposed to the toxins in their body. While Tucker is out saving orcas, in a way, he's saving himself. The conservation canines mostly come from shelters. They're dogs who tend to be a little obsessive, especially about playing with balls. They sniff Tucker. out scat Tucker, you're the best. and get rewarded with play. The scientists get data. Everybody wins. It's really an unprecedented tool because if you think about it, being able to get this information from multiple species at the same time, using our dogs, over such a very vast landscape at you know, really frequent time intervals is just incredibly powerful when you, when you think about all the information that is being made available through feces.